Welcome back designers. In today's tutorial, I am going to demonstrate how to create a basic event flyer using Adobe InDesign. First, we're going to take a look at three event flyers that I created on InDesign, each for a gallery show, two of which were real and one was fictional. Here you have the event flyer for Design Stars, our exhibition of graphic design work last year. And you can see how I use InDesign's Gridify method so that I could create this very interesting graphic with each of your pop art portraits. You can see how I applied uniform formatting by applying a circular corner to each of the portraits and a stroke in blue around each of the portraits as well. And you can see how I inserted an image inside of the text that reads Design Stars. I did pretty much the same thing for this particular event flyer for Art Avenue. You can see how, again, I'm using the Gridify method so that I can organize all of those artworks neatly inside of the grid. I'm applying uniform formatting through the use of the straight edges and the red stroke. And I'm inserting the image of the artwork inside of a big, heavy block of text that serves as my main heading. This is what we're going to be designing today. So I'm going to take you through how to create a fictional event flyer like you guys see here. I decided to use my own art for inspiration. And once again, we'll be using the Gridify method where we're going to be placing images inside of text. And we're going to be using a no-fail layout so that we can create our event flyers. First things first, I'm going to hit new file on InDesign. I'm going to select the print preset and I'm going to be using a letter size document. I'm going to be titling my letter size document. You guys will see that the measurements are already input for me. They're input as picas. If you don't understand picas, you can always change it to inches. I want to go and place a reference image inside of my pasteboard. You guys don't have to do this. I just wanted to be able to follow along to my reference um, because I'm basically going to be copying the same layout momentarily. To create the layout, I'm going to be using my frame tool, my rectangular frame tool, and I'm going to start by dragging out a series of rectangles with my frame tool. You guys will recall that the difference between the frame and shape tools is that the frame tool has like that X right in the center. And the frame tool can be, used as, can be used as a placeholder for images, text, or just color among several different options. I want to create a grid of equally sized rectangles. So using my frame tool, I'm dragging out the frame and holding down the right arrow key on my, on my keyboard so that I can split it up into three equal squares or rectangles. Likewise, I'm doing at the bottom, I want to split it up into two equal rectangles as well. So using my frame tool, I'm going to drag it out and this time I'm going to click the up arrow so I can split it into smaller, um, more horizontal frames. Again, I want to follow the exact same layout as the reference that I have to my right hand side on the pasteboard. So I'm just labeling some of the components that are going to be going inside of the layout. So I know that's going to be my heading. So I just wrote text goes here as a reminder. Now that I adjusted my frames, I'm going to hold down shift so I can select multiple frames simultaneously. Then using Ctrl D as my shortcut, I'm going to place several images inside of the frames. This event flyer will advertise a fictional show by the fabulous Elizabeth Abaya. So I am going to be selecting different artworks that I've made to populate the flyer. You'll see that I loaded multiple images when I hit Ctrl D and I can click inside each frame one by one depending on where I want the image to go. You'll see I right clicked on the images, I selected the option that says fitting, and I selected fill frame proportionately. And what this will do is that it's going to fill the image inside of the space of the frame. So in other words, it's going to make the image a little bit smaller so that it fits inside of whatever size frame you created. You'll notice I'm double clicking inside of the image so that I can see like a red 
box around the image and this will allow me to shift the image up and down so you can see I'm desperately trying to make my color wheel fit inside of this frame by again just double clicking on the image and then dragging on the corners to adjust the size accordingly I'm gonna repeat my steps and adjust each of my images until I'm happy with their placement This is where I want to apply some uniform formatting to my images. So I'm holding down shift and selecting each of my images one by one or dragging a marquee over all the images so that they're both selected. And then this will allow me to basically apply a stroke or an outline around these each image. So you can see I initially applied a black stroke, but I didn't like the look of it. So I wanted to open up more color options. I double clicked inside of the color swatch and then this allowed me to open up my RGB color space picker. And what I'm doing is I'm utilizing the eyedropper tool so that I can basically sample colors from the image. So if I zoom in, you can see how the stroke now utilizes the same exact blue that I use as the background for my Mario color wheel. For the main heading, you guys want to go and select a very bold font because we are going to be inserting an image inside of the heading, as you can see in my reference image to the right hand side. I'm recycling the name Design Star because I basically had no other ideas at the time. And I'm going up into my options bar so that I can change the font from the default to a font called Alfarm, which I installed from dafont.com and what I like about it is that it's very minimalistic it has very geometric letter forms and it's bold enough that you're going to be able to see the image clearly when I insert it inside of the frame at the bottom I'm actually just going to go and fill it with a color again just following the same recipe that I was using in my reference image you can see how I double clicked inside of the swatches so that I could go and open up my color picker and sample one of the colors used within the designs on the top. So you can see how I'm matching the same pink used in the typographic portrait to the pink on the bottom frame. Then I am going and using my type tool and dragging out a text box within my pasteboard where I'm going to be writing in my um, text. So again, I'm just going to be making it up you guys are going to be using whatever information I gave you on Schoology to um, fill in your informative flyer. In this case, I'm just going to make up some information for a fictional gallery show, as I stated before, following the exact same recipe of my template above. Now that I finished typing in all the information, I'm going and moving in that text box on top of my pink frame this allows me to position the text as i see fit and generally speaking i advise you to do that if you're going to be placing text within some kind of color frame i advise you guys to keep your font selection minimal so you can see that i'm actually going and recycling a lot of the the same fonts so i'm going to be using the same alpharm font because it's such a small block of text and I want it to be clearly visible from a distance. You can see how some of my text got overset because it's basically too big for such a small frame. So you can go and adjust it by going and dragging on the corners of the text frame and amplifying the text frame so that all of your text fits the more that you amplify the size. You're going to see me adjust this several times because I was very dissatisfied with the look. That is totally okay. You guys can experiment as you see fit until the text just looks right. Reminder that you want to keep it fairly smaller 
than your heading. So if my heading is design star, I'm going to make sure that this is going to be larger and more attention getting to the average viewer. And then all the information below it is going to be smaller in size. So you can see how I'm adjusting those lines using my three levels of typographic hierarchy here so that I can create my level one being my heading, my levels two and three being the informative text below. You can see how I'm going into preview mode by pressing W and zooming in and out so that I can see the parts of my design that need a little bit more help. You're going to see me make several changes to the text because I was not satisfied with its look and that's totally fine. You can keep adjusting the size, you can keep adjusting the placement as necessary. I encourage you also to use W to go into preview mode and this will allow you to see all of the work without the guides. Now I'm ready to work on my headings. So I'm selecting Design Star, going to the type menu at the top of my workspace, and selecting the option that says Create Outlines. Then, after I create outlines, this is essentially going to be a shaped layer, similar to a star, circle, whatever. So I can press Ctrl D to insert an image, as you can see that I've done here. I wanted to actually recycle the shoe design to go and insert inside of my heading. And you can see how some of the bubbles in the shoe design are showing through because the font is so large and blocky that it makes it visible from a distance. I'm also going to make it a little bit more attention getting by applying a very thin stroke around the text. So you can see that once again I am sampling one of the colors within the design to try to keep the appearance a little bit more unified. I don't encourage you to use heavy strokes around your objects as this will make your design look heavy. So keep it minimal. After tinkering with the different colors and the different placement options, I decided that I wanted a dark background. So I dragged out a frame and I made it as large as the letter size document and I filled it with the same blue used in one of my designs. To place it in the back, I'm using my mouse and selecting the right click option, then going to arrange and send to back. And what this will do is automatically place that blue frame underneath all of the imagery and all of the text in my document. And as you can see, adding that really dark navy blue is giving a lot more contrast to the bright colors used elsewhere in the text and in the design overall. My design is almost finished, but I wanted to add a little bit more visual oomph. I held down shift so I could select all of my image frames simultaneously. Then I went to the object menu at the top of my workspace and I selected corner options. And the corner options will allow you to give the corners of your image frames a more fancy appearance. You can see how I used a drop down menu so that I could go and preview the different corner options available. This corner option, for example, will go and give the corners a more rounded appearance. If that's your disliking, you can always go and select a different one. So I'm going back to object and corner options and I'm testing the different options available. I ended up selecting one called inset and you can see how I'm going and adjusting the size of the corner, making it larger and a little bit more dramatic by going and dragging on the little plus signs. When you're happy with your corner options, you're going to click OK to save your changes. Now that I've adjusted all of the components of my flyer and I created a visually stimulating final draft, I'm ready to export my final by going to File, Export, and from the drop down menu, I'm going to select PNG because I want to save my final draft as an image file. This will make it easy for me to save it and publish it across different online platforms and social media websites. If I wanted to print this flyer, I would need to select PDF from the drop down menu as this is a standard for a high quality print project. Can't wait to see all your works. Hit me up if you have any questions. Peace out.